Good morning. Um, I'm Geoffrey Peters, and uh, it is my great pleasure to um, to be here for the um, uh, defense of uh, the long-awaited uh, PhD defense of uh, Perfecto Jose Herrera Boyer, uh, entitled Marriage, an account of music audio extractor semantic description of context awareness in the three ages of uh, MIR. The PhD has been um, supervised by Dr. Uh, Francesc uh, Javier Serra Casals and uh, Dr. Uh, Emilia Gomez Gutierrez. <laughs> Sorry for my <laughs> French accent. <laughs> but Catalan should sound almost the same. No, wait, um, okay, so uh, I'm Geoffroy Peters. I will present this, uh, this jury. Uh, I'm professor uh, at Telecom Paris Tech. Uh, I'm here with uh, Sergi Jorda Puig from uh, University Pompeu Fabra, which will be the secretary of this jury, and uh, Dr. Joseph uh, Uis uh, Arcos. Uh, from uh, del Consejo Superior del Investigazione uh, Scientificas. So, um, Perfecto Herrera will present this work. You will have uh, around 45 to 50 minutes to present uh, your, uh, the work you did during your PhD. Then after, uh, we will have a question from, uh, from the jury members. Then for the ones who are a PhD in the audience, uh, you will be able to, to ask questions. Then I will, after we will go to the deliberation. First of all, thanks uh, to the members of this committee uh, for his time to review uh, this uh, thesis and also to my directors. Uh, <coughs> the thesis has been titled Mirages, an account of music, audio extractors, semantic description, and context awareness in the three ages of MIR. And in my presentation, I will follow uh, this outline, which is motivated and uh, the underlying hypothesis that I am trying to, uh, to uh, de develop, I have tried to develop in the, in the thesis, is based on a paper by Frank Nack uh, titled The Future in Digital Media is Computing, uh, um, Digital Media Computing is Meta, in which he uh, proposed that uh, multimedia evolution followed a series of ages uh, characterized by different features, and the names he uh, gave to these ages were quite well suited for what I was witnessing during my work during these uh, 20 years on music information retrieval. So, uh, in addition to provide uh, motivation and some context, which I am already providing, uh, I will talk about uh, one age, the age of extractors, then the age of semantic descriptors, the age of context aware systems, and then I will put forward a proposal. My view, in my view, there is a new age uh, in this uh, evolution that it could be called the age of creative systems. And I will finish with some concluding thoughts and some wrap up. <coughs> this is an atypical dissertation. I should. Uh, say that and probably uh, it, is, it is known that, uh, that uh, uh, what, what is reported here is not uh, the typical uh, research that focus on a specific problem and tries to refine this problem, tries to describe, tries to uh, come up with uh, uh, algorithms that improve over uh, the, the selected uh, problem. It's a, it's a a collection of papers, a collection of research reports that were motivated by my different types of involvement in different projects here in the, in, in the MTG. Uh, I will not go into the details about uh, why I have been uh, uh, procrastinating during 20 years uh, <laughs> until doing my, my duties, uh, <clears throat> but uh, uh, Having this perspective, 
and this experience uh, made me to, uh, to, to provide some glue to certain selected publications from, from my uh, long list of uh, journal papers and conference papers. I tried to select some of them uh, in a way that I could uh, write some narrative that uh, puts them somehow together. And uh, um, help me to illustrate these different ages that I am proposing to, to consider when, when uh, uh, examining these 20 years of, of history. It should be uh, noted, uh, stressed, that uh, this work has been possible because I have been very lucky to count with many collaborators, many excellent collaborators, and it's, uh, it's great to see some of, of them again here since uh, long ago. Uh, I, I cannot have uh, words to, uh, to acknowledge uh, all these experiences that, that, uh, and, and the, the learning that I got from, from that interaction. Um, <clears throat> during these uh, 20 years of uh, evolution in music information retrieval and in my work here, I have uh, been uh, usually happy to wear different hats. Uh, and uh, this, this probably is motivated because uh, my background is quite different from the engineering or computer, uh, computer science. I come from uh, cognitive science, uh, psychology, uh, mm, and, and, and during mm, mm, the work that has, has been reported, uh, I got the opportunity to enter to learn about other different disciplines or at least touch or taste uh, a bit of other di different disciplines. Uh, so uh, from, from psychoacoustics, computer music, and statistics, which uh, made my, my original background, uh, the different projects and the different uh, research problems that, that had been addressed uh, helped me to move around uh, other uh, sometimes quite different disciplines. And, and, and also my curiosity as a, mm, well, as a kind of, uh, would like to, 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 to say, a Renaissance person that uh, tries to connect uh, science, uh, art, uh, music, and different disciplines, and read about uh, biology, and read about uh, physics. And sometimes uh, I like to find some idea that maybe could be applied to one problem that we have. Sometimes uh, there are uh, techniques that could be adapted or could be tried. So. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange, a weird uh, uh, dissertation, in fact. Uh, my, my idea is that uh, I cannot be a specialist. And this is a, a, a message that you shouldn't take, especially those that are young, uh, because uh, what will help you to progress in your career is to be a, a good specialist on something. Uh, so uh, this is something different. This is a, you can take it uh, as a more or less uh, not good example to be followed. <laughs> and let's start with the, the way that uh, accounts and, and uh, stories usually start. Once upon a time, when everything was computer music, more than 20 years ago, uh, there was just uh, one concept that uh, uh, accounted for whatever research in music technology. And this was computer music. And we had one conference to uh, disseminate our knowledge, the, computer, the International Computer Music Conference, which is still uh, being uh, held. Uh, and there was one journal, which was the Computer Music Journal. And uh, I am, uh, I am uh, presenting uh, this, this uh, historical fact because we will see how uh, different has evolved this field in these 20 years. Now we have plenty of places, uh, conferences, and, uh, and mm, publication means to disseminate our, our work. But uh, there is one seminal paper uh, that was not published in Computer Music Journal, and it's from uh, 1996, which uh, at that time uh, proved to be really seminal and, and guide uh, a lot of our research in the beginning. And this is, uh, it, it, in, in the title, we can, we can uh, get the, the most of the 
um, keywords, uh, content-based classification, search, and retrieval of audio. And I guess that reading, reading the paper could still be enlightening for, for us. And probably some of the proposals or some of the ideas are not still fulfilled. <clears throat> but this was, this was a, 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 a paper proposing a direction, proposing certain te technologies or certain uh, te uh, techniques to be uh, used in order to start describing uh, audio and music contents and doing operations with the descriptions that could be created. In, during this, uh, this uh, presentation and in the dissertation, I have been uh, uh, following uh, certain timelines, and here uh, you, can, you can see the, the overall picture. You see that uh, uh, there are four different ages depicted here, the three that NAC uh, indicated, and my proposal that now uh, you see around uh, 2013, a new age has started. These ages are overlapping, so meaning that the, the topics and the technologies uh, do not disappear or are not uh, changed by uh, other techniques. Uh, everything, all this knowledge is still available. Uh, the, the, the yellow yellow stars mean that I have selected uh, papers uh, in these specific uh, moments and ages, and I will uh, I will talk about, about them. I will summarize some of the, of the uh, contributions. And I have also uh, put some landmarks above. More of, most of them are projects that uh, were uh, done here in the, in the MTG. There are some other external uh, landmarks, la like, uh, well, the, the, the first uh, Izmir conference or uh, for example, uh, uh, the, the, the BMAT startup. I will mention uh, most of them as I will elaborate my discourse. So, it's uh, time to start uh, with this account um, in the age of feature extractors. And this is, uh, uh, this is the beginning at that time when we face the problem of uh, addressing content that is hidden in audio files, in music files, in collections that could be uh, in, in, in central servers uh, of a um, record uh, company or in personal computers. Uh, the, first, uh, the first instinct was uh, let's compute whatever can be computed. Uh, we were aware that the signal uh, was hiding a lot of information. So addressing what can be computed directly from uh, an audio signal or more indirectly by applying certain by uh, certain front ends doing certain uh, well-known transformations what how can we convert this uh, information that is hidden in the signal into representations of the content uh, so at that time source separation couldn't be trusted at all or almost at all in at least in music uh, so, one of our leading ideas was try to generate some understanding without separation. We were, not, uh, we, we were trying to, to, to address directly what, what is in the, in the sound file. And uh, at that time, <clears throat> an international initiative uh, called MPEG-7 uh, was uh, also starting, and it had a, a very ambitious uh, goals highly, too, too, too high ambitious goals probably, uh, which were, were describing content of whatever multimedia uh, element we could find. And describing this content in all the ways possible and creating a standard for representing all this information, for storing this information and, and for making possible to query a collection of representations in different ways. And I had the pleasure uh, to share some of this, uh, of this work that, that we did in, in, in MPEG-7 with, with Dr. Peters. 
and uh, uh, probably the, during the discussion, maybe uh, it will it, it could be a, a topic to uh, to review. Uh, but uh, probably most of you are not really aware about this MPEG-7. But at that time was an important initiative and was supported by the uh, European Union. Um, the idea was let's create this uh, this this standard. Let's try to de develop the technologies that make possible this idea, which is a nice idea, uh, to, to have whatever multimedia content well indexed and uh, accessed by many different criteria. At that time, uh, also the, the, the first uh, Izmir conference happened, and uh, I, was, uh, I was lucky to, 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 to be accepted to one paper, uh, so it made me, uh, it made possible that uh, to, to meet all the people that were somehow in tune with those ideas that uh, music and audio content can be described in detail in different uh, layers, considering different perspectives, and this helps to, uh, th th this should affect different uh, communities, different scientific communities, different uh, user communities. And finally, uh, the other element that framed this, this work during the, the age of feature extractors were two uh, Euro European uh, projects that were led by ERCAM at that time, uh, were, were, were named uh, Cuidad and Cuidado, and they, they framed the creation of uh, uh, our first sets of descriptors with the, with the, uh, with the idea that uh, using these descriptors, we could help uh, to, to find sound effects in big collections, uh, to retrieve music by using certain categories, uh, to retrieve sounds, uh, musical sounds from a collection of, of musical samples uh, by using the content that is hidden. Uh, so, well, uh, this, uh, this effort led to several papers that uh, have been included in, in this uh, first selection for the, for, the, for the age of feature extractors. Um, but I would like to start with one that was, uh, that happened a bit, uh, was written a bit before these uh, this, uh, projects and, and initiatives, which, which is this vibrato extraction and parameterization in the spectral modeling synthesis framework, which is my first paper in the field. Uh, it's from a conference. I, I have tried to, I have, uh, most of the papers that I have included in the thesis come from journal papers. Uh, but I have selected a couple that were important for me that uh, were presented in, in, in conferences. Uh, this one uh, tried to, to, or reported on, on two uh, different uh, strategies to extract vibrato from, from a monophonic audio signal, uh, taking advantage of the spectral modeling synthesis uh, framework that was developed uh, by, by Xavier Serra and was uh, uh, developed here uh, in the MTG, and uh, the, 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 the importance for me, the, the, the criteria for, for selecting this paper was that surprisingly, well, for me not surprisingly, but maybe for you uh, is surprising. At that time, you could uh, publish, you could get papers accepted without any systematic evaluation of the goodness of your algorithm. Just by putting a couple of examples, positive examples, and one to negative to discuss further improvements, that was fine. So, well, this, this, is, uh, this is the paper, and at that time, we were uh, working in, in, in this way. Uh, no statistics uh, about uh, performance. Mm, well, uh, ho hopefully, fortunately, this has changed a lot for, for good. Uh, <clears throat> Then, in, in automatic classification of drum sounds, a comparison of fit, uh, feature selection methods and classification techniques. Again, uh, this, uh, this MPEG-7 uh, initiative was pushing us for, for, for creating and testing different types of uh, acoustic uh, features that capture certain aspects of sounds. In this case, this paper uh, was, uh, was the first uh, paper uh, dealing with, with uh, 
class automatically classifying drum sounds. A big collection of drum sounds, uh, different categories. Uh, how can we create a system that is capable to label, properly label uh, the, 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 the sound uh, according to the instrument or to the big category of uh, families of instruments, <coughs> membranes versus plates. That was, was the, the, the main uh, family for that. And uh, it was uh, also one of the early machine learning papers in the MTG uh, because machine learning was also usually outside many publications, was not one of the, mm, of the tools of the trade in, 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 in so many papers. And uh, yeah, in the, here we also evaluated the possibility that when you try to classify a certain amount of sounds, using a certain amount of labels, sometimes grouping these labels into families and doing uh, hierarchical classifications could uh, improve the results. <coughs> Connected to, to the previous one, this automatic classification of musical <coughs> instrument sounds uh, was a, a, a different, uh, different uh, uh, type of paper it has been my most cited paper until very recently and uh, was a, 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 revi a revision of, of the early Izmir uh, paper that, that uh, uh, I mentioned. And this is, uh, this is interesting because it doesn't include empirical research. It's a tutorial, some, some type of, of uh, introduction to the topic, presentation of which are the essential aspects that you should uh, a focus on when dealing with uh, uh, sound classification and some ideas on the features that you could uh, compute and the classification uh, algorithms that at that time you could, uh, you could try to, to, to build these classification models in an uh, efficient and effective way. And was also one of the earliest papers in the field that uh, were remarking the potential of uh, support vector machines which at that time and during many years were the most competitive and one of the most competitive uh, ways to, to, to build classifiers. This quest for uh, creating descriptors, inventing ways to characterize audio and music features uh, to capture this content uh, went beyond timbre uh, information and uh, we, we research on other types of features uh, re regarding uh, uh, melodic uh, uh, shapes, regarding uh, um, rhythm, um, and tonal features uh, can also be included in this, in this uh, area of, of, of uh, basic features that communicate part of the content in a music or audio collection. And in this uh, comparative analysis of music recordings from Western and non-Western traditions by automatic tonal feature extraction, uh, we, we try to, to use this basic, uh, somehow low level um, <coughs> features related to the tonal content uh, to try to classify, to tell apart between music coming from the Western tradition and music from other cultural traditions, and even inside these different cultural traditions to try to, 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 to build classifiers, uh, telling apart uh, music from uh, an African culture, from Asian cultures, from China uh, music, etc. Uh, we mostly use comparisons uh, between different uh, statistical distributions, and today this, uh, this paper is uh, should sound a bit uh, rough and naive in this idea of uh, telling apart, uh, describing roughly uh, mus different musical cultures. Uh, we know, uh, thanks thanks to, to to many uh, to several projects, uh, Com Music, one of them, uh, that that uh, there is a lot to be uh, to be done to to characterize and to understand other musical cultures. But I think that this uh, this first research, uh, this early piece of, of literature on, on the topic probably was uh, sparkling ideas in, in Xavier's proposal at that time. Uh, and a good way to conclude with this, with this period 
uh, is to, uh, to report on a feature extraction library. The, the age of feature extractors could be somehow not concluded, but, uh, but uh, reaching a, a highlight by uh, creating a toolbox that has been used by many researchers all over the world and is still maintained and is still uh, uh, improved. And um, <coughs> it's, a, it's this essential uh, library that is closed plat plat platform, is open, and uh, includes uh, uh, research on many different uh, uh, facets of music, timbre, loudness, uh, pitch, rhythm, tonality, strange uh, descriptors like these uh, morphological descriptors, statistical moments, possibilities to, to compute uh, similarities, etc. And also trying to connect with other systems that uh, researchers use to analyze and uh, describe uh, music. Well, so uh, one of the limitations that during these uh, early years of research we had to face was what is called the semantic gap, which is illustrated somehow here. One uh, dog is uh, saying mm, dog, but uh, is uh, thinking a different animal. Uh, <clears throat> what is uh, uh, what is the the most complex representation of music or audio that we can achieve by computing uh, numbers and symbols from the signal? Well, we can do the something, something, uh, something nice. Some uh, prototypes and systems were were created at that time, but we need to face the fact that users. People, researchers use language, use concepts to address, to describe, uh, to um, organize their knowledge about music and audio. So somehow we needed to develop methodologies and systems and techniques to connect these mental representations with the signal representations. And the distance between these two elements is what uh, I understand as the semantic gap. And in order to, to, to help to connect these, these worlds, the world of subjectivity or maybe cultural agreement uh, about certain uh, musical concepts and what can be computed from the signal is what uh, motivated and sparkled uh, the age of semantic content. Uh, during this, this age, more complex and abstract features were developed and they make possible to address uh, problems like similarity, structure detection, mood, uh, tonality, uh, detecting versions, uh, addressing complexity, uh, addressing genre tags, uh, or other uh, concepts like danceability that have a certain subjectivity in inherent. But by means of machine learning models mostly, and by means of using annotated collections that listeners, users, researchers with some knowledge uh, created, connecting these worlds of what can be extracted directly from the signal and what the listeners are using to refer to this content, uh, the connection could be made. And uh, we were lucky to, to, uh, to, to de develop an uh, and effectively carry out the CIMAC project, Semantic Interaction with Music Audio Contents, uh, which was the first uh, MTG-led uh, European project. At that time, it, it, was, a, it was a big success and, and it was a, a, an excellent opportunity to interact with other leading research uh, uh, centers in, in Europe, learn a lot from, from, from that uh, research and for, for sure uh, address this type of more high level uh, problematic that that uh, we were witnessing and and was uh, uh, was uh, delaying the, the 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 progress in in the research and in getting better systems and in understanding quite well which is the task of describing the content of audio and music. Other projects were around. Audio class was an industrial type of of, of project dealing with. 
classifying sounds and tagging sounds in big sound effect collections. And we had an industrial partner that was pushing us to get really useful results. And uh, all this context made possible to, to create the first, uh, the initial version of Essentia, and also made possible to create the first UPF startup, which was uh, BMAT, and which is still uh, working and in, in good health. And also Freesound, which is also uh, uh, still working and, and in a healthy state, was created at that time. So you see that uh, around 2004, 2005, something different, something uh, big uh, was, was happening. And uh, uh, I, have, uh, I have selected some key publications around those uh, uh, times to illustrate this age of semantic content. Different, different problems, like for example, first of all, connecting this idea of connecting low level features with high level features and uh, <coughs> for, for addressing similarity, for example. And in this paper, unifying low level and high level music similarity measures, we uh, evaluated different ideas on how can we build a similarity metric, sim different similarity metrics uh, that help us to compare music files and tell us these are more similar or less similar and uh, trying to achieve a similarity measurement that correlates with what uh, listeners uh, could agree. So in this paper, uh, we advanced different strategies combining low-level features, combining also semantic features that were developed uh, during uh, in, this, in these projects that I mentioned before. And uh, one of the interesting aspects is that classification, our way to conceptualize the world, to use categories, contain part of a bit of the similarity essence. So using classification models to make an influence on the, on the similarity metrics that, that was computed uh, revealed to be um, very useful. And finally, our, our proposed, uh, our best uh, similarity distance was a combination of low-level descriptors plus high-level descriptors combining different aspects, tonal, timbre, semantic uh, features. And this, uh, this, uh, this, the best system that we evaluated uh, was submitted to one initiative that uh, was happening since uh, 2005, uh, which is the, the, this evaluation of algorithms that happens uh, during, the, uh, during the Izmir conference. Uh, so we submitted for the task of music similarity, this algorithm, and, and was uh, uh, ranked uh, among the, the top systems uh, during, during two years. <coughs> the, the, the problem of uh, finding, retrieving, annotating a large collection of uh, sound files, of sound effects, was addressed uh, in this nearest neighbor's uh, sound annotation with a WordNet taxonomy. At that time, uh, the typical collections that were used for research w contain at most thousand, uh, thousand uh, files or some thousand files. Uh, and in this case, because of an industrial partner, uh, we, we had to deal with, uh, with uh, 50,000 instances. Uh, and uh, the, the, the annotation system that uh, this partner was using uh, uh, was uh, uh, on, on the thousand amount of concepts. So how can you build uh, s some classifier that does something uh, not very bad in, under these conditions? Uh, so while well, you see the, the accuracy was not, uh, was not uh, really uh, amazing, but at that time uh, we couldn't uh, achieve, we couldn't expect uh, uh, to go beyond these this figures. And uh, I have selected uh, also this, uh, this paper because it was the first use of a lexical database, which is called WordNet, for, uh, uh, for tagging a collection of music files or for uh, or, uh, sound effects. And this, this WordNet makes possible to connect terms that have been annotated, select 
suggest new terms because it, it is showing and, and uh, makes possible to navigate along a semantic network of concepts that are related by similarity, by, by uh, um, uh, synonymity, by uh, opposite relationships. So uh, the, the annotation and the derivation of certain tags that could be added to a certain uh, file uh, was, was facilitated by, by, by this uh, warnet that is still used in, in, in research on, on tagging. A different type of problem than class, classifying or tagging uh, some files or that comparing files just by similarity is that of covers. Uh, for me, covers is, is one of the most difficult problems that we can address because the concept of cover is, 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 is ill-defined. We admit as covers as many different variations on a certain <coughs> musical title. And we, our, our way to understand music makes possible that we accept just uh, one version that contains um, two um, words that were used in the original. This is a version. Okay, well, uh, this is a very difficult, uh, di difficult problem. And it goes to what is the essence of a composition. We need to capture some of this essence. And here in chroma uh, binary similarity and local alignment applied to cover some identification, we address uh, this, this problem with some clever tricks and, and with a very uh, detailed and sort of full evaluation of different aspects in the computation of uh, the music representation especially the tonal representation, and also in the computation of uh, a similarity measurement between these, uh, these tracks that, uh, mm, that make uh, this research uh, to lead to, to the best uh, system for this uh, problem during, during two years. Uh, the, 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 there were, well, the, the, the graph is, is quite clear. Uh, there were these clever tricks were based on, on Trying to, uh, trying to um, find ways to make the songs invariance to certain changes that are typical when versions are created. And this, uh, these uh, important aspects are the, ton the tonality, many versions change the tonality, change the melody, uh, and also the tempo. And by making the, the, the system robust to these changes, the performance could be improved a lot. And, uh, and mm, this is also an, an example to, of, of the idea that uh, it pays to try to understand the problem that, that you have at hand. It pays for spending time listening your, your data, uh, listening to your data, uh, understanding what does it mean to solve that problem in terms of uh, what humans uh, tend to do, and because then some hints, some, uh, some good ideas to be applied, to be converted into part of your algorithms uh, can be generated. It's not just a matter of, it, this was not just a matter of, of uh, putting uh, the available technologies uh, and see what could, could be happening. <coughs> Another semantic type of problem is that of mood. Mood means uh, we listen to a piece of music and we attribute, we can say, this is, uh, this is conveying, this is transmitting some happiness, this is transmitting some uh, aggressiveness. And in the indexing music by mood, design and integration of an automatic content-based annotator, we reported on our work on modeling a small amount of categories, just happy, sad, angry, and relaxed, and also the negative categories, which is something that uh, sometimes uh, uh, is not considered. And the negative categories and the positive categories are uh, sometimes can be, uh, the, the relationship is not so straightforward. And the, the annotations uh, came from uh, taking advantage of social networks like uh, Last.fm at that time, uh, what uh, people tagged uh, was uh, used to populate our annotate, uh, annotated collections and uh, 
we added uh, supervision by, by experts, and we built a, a support vector machine-based uh, uh, model that was backing a multimedia search engine. So uh, the, 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 we, we tested the system with, with users that uh, were searching for music, uh, and they were finding these uh, mood annotations, and they were finding that at that time this was an interesting feature uh, to, be, to be included and to be used to try to discover new music. Uh, also, the system uh, uh, was, was uh, submitted to several MIDEX uh, algorithm evaluations and, and also ranked among the top. And uh, even uh, the, the, the work uh, made possible to, to generate some nice uh, and uh, straightforward ways to, to convey uh, these moods, this change of, of, uh, of mood that sometimes uh, the evolution of a musical title can, can provide. <clears throat> and I conclude this uh, age of semantic descriptors with a strange, weird paper that comes from, a, uh, is, is a paper about uh, neuroscience. And uh, I selected uh, this paper first because of its, uh, it has the, the highest impact factor in my collection. Uh, so uh, that, that was something that uh, academically uh, is usually uh, evaluated. So <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's put that. Uh, and also, um, probably more importantly, because it's an illustration of uh, some research opportunities that sometimes you, we, we can find uh, to collaborate with people from other disciplines, provided that we can understand or we can share a common language and we can share a common uh, problem. And here, the researchers needed to, uh, to confirm in a quantitative way that the stimuli that they were using for, the, for their fMRI uh, studies on the effects of different types of music were somehow equalized in terms of certain acoustic features that the, the effects that they were observing in their images were attributed, could be attributed reliably to certain manipulations that they were uh, doing and not to other possible features that the music was, uh, was uh, including. And so, uh, in general, uh, this uh, neuroscience or cognitive science or music cognition can be benefited more than I think that more than what is currently benefited from research that is done um, with a more technological perspective like uh, the research that, that we are doing, because they sometimes need what they call normative collections, a collection of music, a collection of music that uh, you can use as a diagnostic, as a, 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 the same way as a test is uh, passed through uh, a certain person, uh, as a measurement device. So having collections that ensure that most of your population will consider that this music is happy or is sad is a valuable type of contribution. I'm not saying that this was this, my contribution, was a, just a step towards that. Uh, but uh, there is a still work in this, in this uh, path to be done. OK, uh, this is the end of the second age and time to, uh, to move on to another moment, another uh, uh, new age, the, the age of context-aware systems, where uh, the spread of uh, new devices, mobile devices, uh, uh, geolocalization devices, uh, cameras that could be uh, carried uh, everywhere, uh, made possible to include a new layer in the analysis of music listening, especially. Uh, and also, uh, this idea of, of uh, detecting and exploiting, taking advantage of context information, is not just a, a kind of external variables that can affect uh, an, an operation of music listening or music search or music analysis. It's not just the, the, the where or the when or the who uh, you are with uh, when doing that. Context is also something that is operating when we listen to a piece of music. When we listen uh, to a certain moment, we are affected by the previous 
content that we have processed. And in this, uh, during these years of research, usually the analysis that was done with music was very local. We were taking uh, tiny pieces of audio and uh, forgetting about uh, the previous context. Uh, maybe the right unit of analysis is not just uh, a moment in time, a frame, but uh, we need, it would be good to look at uh, uh, an amount of frames before or even a longer time uh, af uh, bef uh, before. So context is also uh, a feature that is within music. And these are, these are the, two, uh, the two types of context that were progressively incorporated in research, uh, the listener context and the, the audio context uh, with this idea of multi-resolution analysis, for example. So we don't do just a, a small scale analysis, but longer uh, temporal uh, windows to, to compute the descriptors and also using cultural information, incorporating, interacting with what audio is uh, communicating or what we can extract from, from audio. This is the age where music recommenders uh, start to, to, to flourish. And this music recommendation calls for being aware about context, about the situation a listener, a selector is uh, experiencing. I did not work on, on target projects uh, on, this, on this topic. Probably this explains why I have only included two papers. Uh, and, and my work happened in, in, in this Pharos project. Uh, we were working still on semantic description and providing uh, search and retrieval for multimedia. And this MCAP was more on, on, the, on the music cognition side. But I have. Uh, anyway, I have uh, uh, selected a couple of papers that go into the, these ideas of incorporating contextual information uh, to improve music listener, listening experiences. And uh, <clears throat> the first one was dealing mostly with user profiling, with characterizing uh, the preferences of a listener which is something that can be done in many systems uh, by uh, waiting until the listener has uh, sent a lot of likes or have, uh, has, sent, has uh, played a lot of tracks. But uh, our approach was quite, a different, quite different. Uh, first, we wanted to test uh, how semantic features could help this uh, music uh, uh, recommendation. And then we wanted that the listeners would be uh, proactive in this creation of the profile. So we use this, we introduce this idea of the preference set of songs. We asked uh, people to provide a collection of music that you like. And from this music, once it was analyzed, we derived a user profile. And a user profile that included many semantic descriptors like uh, the genres that are preferred, the instruments, or some approximations to, to them, the rhythm patterns that were preferred, uh, moods that were preferred, tonalities that were preferred. So the, 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 the representation of a, a single user contained information that was derived from their preference set. And uh, by uh, taking advantage of this, of this profile, we could elaborate some recommendations and evaluate them. And at the same time, in parallel, we devised and, 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 and tried and tested an idea that uh, has not been uh, frequently uh, used in, in, in the field, which is how can we provide uh, a, a summary, a graphical summary of preferences, of musical preferences? How uh, my ID, my musical ID, which is the, the, the fastest way? The fastest way is by using some image that is coding part of, or as, as much as possible, of your preferences. And this, this made possible to, to, to create this uh, type of avatars uh, that were mappings. They, they, they were mapping different elements uh, by using the differences in, in the uh, user profiles. <coughs> uh, 
evaluating, evaluating this uh, music recommendation is a bit uh, complex. Uh, how can uh, what what we could uh, do for for evaluating the systems was uh, try different strategies uh, to to generate uh, recommendations, try to compare the, our recommendations, our uh, algorithms to an algorithm that is already running. Like like at that time was uh, last FM was was the the most uh, uh, important and, and ef uh, efficient recommenda uh, recommendation system. So we, we introduced some, uh, some um, methodology ideas, like for example, uh, it, it's important that a recommender from time to time uh, propose a song that you like. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of way to demonstrate that it's understanding yourself. So ev evaluating this trust category uh, is, 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 is important. Uh, it's not just uh, uh, identifying this, this trust uh, is important. And also, uh, it's different uh, to like a song uh, when it's familiar than when it's not familiar. It's important to, uh, to control also uh, your intentions to listen to this track again or just, okay, it's, uh, it's okay, it, I like it, but uh, probably I, I will not uh, listen to it uh, again. So we introduce this, these elements uh, in, in our evaluations. We find out that uh, semantic-based recommendations were better evaluated, better uh, considered than uh, recommendations based on low-level descriptors only. And we approach uh, the, the, the performance, the subjective evaluation that was given to last FM recommendations, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, the system, a system that was based on collaborative filtering, which is a strategy to totally different from ours, which was a content-based strategy. Uh, well, uh, we couldn't beat uh, this, uh, this system, but we learned a lot on, on how can we model musical preference, which is still an open issue, I think. And for, of course, the, this, uh, these nice graphical depictions were also a nice, uh, nicely accepted by, by, the, by the user. And uh, in, the second, in the second study related to the uh, to this uh, context-aware systems is a study on, we could say, the chronobio chronobiology of music uh, listening, which is something that uh, at that time was not uh, addressed in, in our field. Uh, as as uh, biologists have uh, shown, we are uh, under the influence of many uh, um, clocks that had are happening chemically inside ourselves, and these clocks sometimes uh, are set by uh, the sunlight or by other chemicals. Uh, so this means that our behavior can be also influenced by the time of the day, by the day of the week, by the seasons. And listening is just another type of behavior. So we taking advantage of some uh, some logs that uh, that were. Uh, gather from last FM that contain timestamps on different listening uh, from uh, many listeners. We started a study. We did a, a study on this, uh, in, uh, with, with, on this influence, and uh, <clears throat> this. Uh, when, when you try to to describe and. Uh, and analyze information that has a temporal recurrent pattern. There are some techniques that are not very popular, but uh, uh, have been developed, uh, and, and, and many papers have been published, that are called circular statistics. So the, the paper was also uh, a proposal to, uh, to have a look at, at these circular statistics that, that show information that has a, a circularity, uh, uh, pa recurrent patterns in time, in a more compact way that, than uh, lines or other typical representations. So by, by, mean, by means of these circular graphs, uh, which, by the way, last FM, when they read the paper, adapted <laughs> quite straightforwardly uh, the idea to, to, to their mm, depictions of, of uh, every user's behavior, we started to see, not very clearly yet, uh, that listening to certain genres and listening to certain artists 
for certain types of users follow a certain temporal pattern. And there were certain hours where certain artists or certain genres were preferred in, during listening. <clears throat> uh, hopefully, this was not uh, just a paper, a strange paper, and, and you can find uh, uh, currently papers dealing with that, especially with the, with the influence of, of the seasons of the year on the, on the patterns of listening. And uh, <clears throat> to ap approach the, the, the end of, of, my, of my dissertation and this talk, uh, this defense, I would like to propose that now uh, we are into a different, a new age, which is adding something that was not um, present in the previous systems, uh, which were more, more or less created for listeners, for musicologists, for, um, for a kind of, we could say, kind of passive consumption of the information. Not passive because search is not passive, but uh, something else can be, can be added, and this is creativity, this is generativity. And uh, in this age of creative systems that I propose we are into, because there are some, some signs that uh, this could make some sense. For example, in, in 2013, uh, yes, 13, uh, a creative MIR late-breaking session happened in Izmir. Uh, the Myres Roadmap, which is an effort of uh, uh, gathering uh, research ideas and summarizing the, the state of the art on uh, sound and music computing, uh, especially on, on MIR, also uh, spend uh, several pages describing different areas where analysis of music content could be used inside a creative scenario. Musicians, composers, DJs could take advantage of getting their collections analyzed, and uh, getting uh, some suggestions on how to continue, which could be the next movement, the, the next gesture, the next sound to be played, the next track to be, to be played, uh, the next effect to be applied to the, to the music. So creation calls for, in, in my view, calls for First, getting some features that describe an object, getting some meaning of, the, of these objects, connecting the objects with our mental representations of this music, and also putting this information in some context. Where are we? In the disco? We are in the lab? Uh, are we listening some music with friends? This, this, uh, uh, which is the goal that we want to achieve with this system? Uh, are we trying to create a new composition? Are we trying to generate a variation on uh, an existing one? Uh, so this is what context is, is providing. Uh, so when we combine these three elements that have been elaborated and have been refined during all this time, we can address this still open issue of creation. What is creativity? We don't, we don't have a... a, a a good answer yet to that. And it's a still a lot of research to be done on creativity and special, especially in, in musical creativity. Uh, inside this, uh, this age, also an important breakthrough was uh, the, the Giant Steps project where uh, I was uh, working during these uh, three years, uh, where we tried to develop agents, tools, that help creators to be more creative, uh, to understand better the tasks that they were addressing, to generate interesting uh, variations, compositions, uh, to understand and use models of genres. The, the, the idea of modeling a composer, modeling uh, a style, how can we capture what defines a style, the way a composer creates, the way a DJ generates a session? We, we have the tools for doing that thanks to all these previous uh, achievements that uh, I tried to, 
to paint uh, somehow during my, my uh, talk. Uh, <clears throat> probably you have uh, experienced creative systems that just uh, consist of playing a button and generating something. And this is not what uh, we should uh, target when doing research on creative systems. What we want is uh, to create si systems that enhance music creativity, that empower the user, that put the user in the, in the way, in the, in the situation that he or she feels that understand the system, interacts with the system in a, in a let's say, in an equal way, and the system gives opportunities, options, to decide on the final output. Not just, okay, generate 20 Bach chorales. What's the point of that? Maybe understanding how Bach compose chorales, which is, which is valuable. Uh, but uh, the, the type of, of creative systems that we are targeting are kind of different than that. And uh, this poses new evaluation issues that probably have not been still solved. How can you evaluate a system that is creating music? Uh, you cannot just use uh, objective fe uh, features or objective numbers. Uh, and we can understand that there are different layers uh, of evaluation, which is part of what uh, uh, we address in this final paper that I have included. And you can see how we started with computer music and the computer music journal, and I have finally <laughs> return <laughs> to, the, to the computer music journal. Uh, so in this uh, rhythm concatenative synthesis for electronic music techniques implementation and evaluation, uh, we address a, a, a type of composition technique which is uh, uh, sound uh, would be called mosaicing, for example, is one of the of the names, concatenative synthesis. The idea to, to use uh, a sound, a music uh, track to, to model, to change, to create a new track that contains elements that are in the seed that you are using, that have been extracted by means of analyzing the audio and musical features. So the audio and musical features of the seed are guiding the way that the new music is created. And uh, one of the contributions of, of this paper was to provide, to, to give a full-fledged system to play with concatenated uh, synthesis, a system that could be used inside uh, Ableton Live by uh, whoever that uh, would like to, to install it, uh, which is something that uh, with these systems are just uh, prototypes that sometimes run, sometimes mm, crash, um, do not have a nice, a nice uh, user interface as, as you, can, you can see is uh, something uh, special in colors is, is nice and relatively clear to be understood. We also provide a, a state of the art on the topic because uh, mm, we, we, we felt that the, the, the existing one was quite quite old, and uh, and probably the the, the most uh, interesting contribution is this 2D in interface that can be manipulated in real time. So you don't have to uh, to be happy with the first result that the system is is giving you. You can change, you can experiment, uh, and the the evaluation that uh, was done with this system used uh, uh, three different. Uh, layers, the system as itself, the robustness, the, efficient, the, 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 the efficient, uh, efficiency, the performer that is manipulating that, and finally the listener that is listening to the outputs of the system. Okay, uh, just, uh, this is not, uh, I, I, I have not included that in, in the thesis, uh, I hope that you don't mind uh, just uh, uh, just to show what could be, this is a kind of, uh, is, a, is a Frankenstein from, from different uh, screenshots, uh, illustrating which is uh, the type of creative systems that I would like to, to pursue, uh, hopefully, in the future. Uh, the system is, is, uh, is setting a dialogue with the user and is 
giving uh, the possibility to select which is the, the amount of control that I want from this system. I can, I can tell you, do this type of analysis, do this type of, of behavior, but not this type. Then it's adding context to the operation. So it's not the same to do a certain operation, a certain uh, filtering or equalizing or um, treatment to the voice if, the, if uh, you have dialogue of, uh, or if you are uh, playing a voice uh, for pop or for opera. So you are tuning the system by giving certain context. Then some analysis is happening. The analysis of your recording is happening. And it's here there is a goal to improve clarity, which is a semantic concept. What clarity means? We need to define this clarity not just by a property that signals by themselves have. Of course, they have this property, but we need listeners to decide if this is clear or not, if, if this voice in the mix is clear or not. And finally, we have options. The system is not happy with just one. You don't have to, to, uh, to, to, to accept one option. You can select. To conclude uh, with this age of creative systems, I will, self, I will cite myself uh, writing or saying uh, this, uh, this sentence. Uh, this idea that maybe during many years we, we have focused on information, information to be retrieved, uh, to be uh, computed, to be organized, to be accessed. And maybe now it's time to shift the focus towards interaction and to understand what means, what does interacting with the information means. We don't have useful models from, uh, at least from what I know, uh, that guide us on how humans do we search for information, which is, which is the behavior, which are the principles that guide this information-seeking behavior. So maybe MIR could be turned into MIR, or the I could have a different meaning in the future. <coughs> Time to after all that, uh, it's time to wrap up and, and, and conclude. And uh, I offer some, uh, some list, or un not organized list, uh, of some bumps that I found in, during these different paths, during the different uh, ages. Uh, I am uh, guilty of some of them. I cannot say, well, I did not uh, that way. Um, uh, we, had, uh, we had been doing research very Western-centric, forgetting or considering that all the music and all the semantic representation uh, comes from uh, the, the way that uh, uh, Western, Westerners uh, have uh, been raised and the system of, of uh, beliefs that uh, are typical in a Western developed country. Our methodology have been improving has, uh, has been improving, but uh, sometimes uh, is, is not, is not uh, as good as it should be. Replicability until recently uh, was outside uh, any question. The understanding of the tasks sometimes uh, are, are, is amazing to read papers, to review papers that don't clearly convey the idea that, that uh, uh, the, the topic, the, the problem has been has been understood from a musical point of view. It's just a matter of uh, number crunching or something like that. Big numbers, I was an adamant of big numbers some time ago. Uh, my experience uh, tends me to push uh, towards the idea that big numbers are needed for sure, but sometimes when you need to get insights, it's better to have a small amount of elements, objects that that you can concentrate on. You can understand quite well a small amount of instances. Your memory is not capable to, to process a lot of information. When you try to understand a small amount of objects, sometimes you get insights that then the big numbers can uh, uh, help you to prove that it's not just a biased insight. Still, 
uh, banalization of music experience is happening. Uh, emotions are considered just acts, or something else uh, is usually happening when, when we are listening and uh, experiencing emotional uh, reactions. Uh, we have uh, thought we have been very naive about the technologies that we were de developing, and we were giving technology to companies that then change this technology and, and convert this technology into something that is, uh, is stealing something from us or is uh, not giving as much as they could give to us. So, well, I, I don't have any, <laughs> any recommendation or solution for, for that. Just uh, be sure, uh, be aware that technology is not neutral and uh, you should care about what you developed. I'm not saying that you don't do some research. You just mm, try to imagine how this could be used for, for what. And uh, MIR sometimes seems the current MIR that uh, I am experiencing, sometimes I have the feeling that it's becoming a pure engineering activity. Optimization optimizing something. We try to optimize and we need to do that. But we cannot forget that our field was an open field and uh, many other people from many other communities were invited at least in the, in the, in the beginning to, to be there. And uh, just by applying one selection criteria, one evaluation criteria which has to do with, with optimal numbers, is, is to focus on a very narrow way to, uh, to understand the, the, the problem of understanding music understanding, which is what I usually rephrase, what is MIR about. We left uh, some course, corpses on the road, hopefully. Uh, for example, MPEG-7 that uh, you probably or uh, no, nobody is, is talking about. There are some very interesting problems at a certain moment that uh, apparently have not, uh, have not been uh, solved and do not generate a lot of research currently. The semantic web, I don't know where the semantic web is, is now. Uh, papers dealing with boring comparisons between classifiers that gave not uh, uh, any clarification of, of, of anything. Uh, the, the quest for universal systems, a system to uh, recommend whatever type of music, a system to create whatever type of uh, transformation. We have learned that we need to consider context, so it's a, it's perfectly valid uh, to 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 narrow down our our goals and try to cr create systems that or algorithms that are quite more focused. <clears throat> but uh, I would like to finish with a with a, a positive uh, view, and uh, I see and I hopefully I have communicated. Uh, I hope to have communicated that now we have a mature discipline, something that evolved from, from nothing or from a, a strange, a, a strange uh, eruption from uh, computer, sci uh, computer music. And it has been developing along these three or four different ages. You or uh, new students, new researchers have a a clear idea on which are the specific problems that should be addressed, which are the typical problems that you could uh, uh, select for your, for your research, the techniques that are um, the first that you, sh you should try, the communication channels. Uh, so this is, this is a, 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 an, a proof that our discipline has become, um, could say, paradigmatic. We, we, we have a well-defined discipline. You, you, have a, you can get a, a good map to be oriented inside, to, to get oriented inside. Performance, if we use performance as a, as a uh, figure of merit, have been improving on many of the problems that, that we addressed. But we, fortunately, we are still uh, facing challenging problems like, for example, similarity or modeling preferences or understanding what a musical preference is. Uh, I insist that 
prediction doesn't mean necessarily understanding what we are doing or what is the problem that we are addressing. It's just one of the facets that we need to face. And uh, uh, for me, an, uh, the, the, the final idea that I would like to, uh, to, to present is that maybe we need some theoretical models. Uh, theoretical models like uh, economists have, or I don't want to say uh, other big, big uh, sciences, physics or uh, biology, but at least in the way that some behavioral economics pose their problems. They have theories on how a person could behave under these circumstances. We have situations where we need to understand how a listener will select a type of music or will rate a type of music or a composer will prefer this type of, of sound or this type of sound or a performer will patch a synthesizer this way or this other way. These theoretical models are needed somehow. I don't know if we have the, 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 the knowledge and the te technology to address, to, to get these theoretical models that guide some research. 